distracted? I'm Funky Monkey, and I'll be your operator as we return to the world of the Matrix. You see? For decades, those Hollywood hacks have hounded those lovely ladies Lily and Lana, the Wachowski sisters, for more Matrix mayhem. But to them, the story was told. Zion was free now. The war was over. What more was to come? Well, there was the Matrix Online, but we discussed that along with the rest of the Matrix miscellany all the way back in Matrix Month in Season 1. So what changed? Well, you know, March of Time, Death in the Family, and the desire to put a happier ending to the tales of these characters. All of which brings us to the present day, and today's subject, The Matrix Resurrection. Released in 2021, which is a little less than the year or two I'd like to keep between release and review, but this is The Matrix we're talking about. I couldn't resist. The Matrix Resurrections returns to the world of The Matrix some 60 years later. A new ship and crew are searching for Neo, but isn't he dead? This movie's release was accompanied by a tech demo for the Unreal Game Engine's latest version. So let's jack back in after all these years and witness the magnificent modern miracle of the Matrix. Resurrection. Thomas Anderson lives. And he's a top game designer. Which is more than a little concerning, considering that the last time we saw him, his mind had just been exploded and his eyes had been burned out. So what happened? Stick around to find out. But who's that in the coffee shop? Well... She does look rather familiar. And then the big news hits. The Money Men have spoken and they want Matrix 4. But an afternoon meeting with Tiffany, the coffee shop lady, is more pleasant. And yes, she does look rather a lot like Trinity. But Trinity got a chest full of spikes in the machine city as I recall. So we're either being bamboozled or something fishy's going on. Seriously though, we'll get there soon enough. The plot really gets going when a routine drill is interrupted by a mysterious text. And a familiar red pill. But Anderson's therapist reminds him that it's not real. So aside from the miraculous resurrection of Thomas Anderson, the other big point is that he's taking pills and getting therapy for having jumped off his work's roof. His work being deus machina, where the events of the Matrix have been rewritten as a hit video game trilogy. And then the White Rabbit appears, telling him to follow, and leading him back to a binary choice, and a surprise appearance from his therapist. But our heroes escape, leading Neo out of the Matrix. Which isn't good for a brain that spent the last 60 years jacked in, so Virtual Morpheus takes him to the dojo. Neo coded a modal. A small recreation of the time that Trinity went looking for Neo inside the Matrix and first met Agent Smith. But his Agent Smith was a composite of Smith and Morpheus. Still, Virtual Morpheus seems pretty okay about it. Neo awakes aboard Captain Bugs' ship, the Nemosign, where Man and Synthiant now work in harmony. Synthiants. Friendly AIs in synthetic bodies. You see, after the war, power got scarce, and the machines had a civil war all of their own. Naturally, some have split off to help humanity. There are even brand new magnetic microbeads that can form bodies for programs to interact with the world. Perhaps if the Smith virus had been able to use one of those. We're also introduced to Io, the new last human city and reintroduced to General Niobe. The General will do anything to protect Io, and prevent a repeat of the great sieges of the Architect's time, but Neo saw that Trinity was still in her pod as he was freed, and he's determined to go back for her. And so our heroes re-enter the Matrix, with a view to re-extracting Trinity, which is just what Smith was expecting. And he brought friends. This latest version of Smith was freed of his persona when Neo was extracted, and he has no intention of returning under the thumb of his former masters. And the Merovingian? He's just mad that he's not a rich somebody anymore. 
and so Neo and Trinity bond once more. But shock! It was all a ruse. Permit me then to explain at last precisely what is going on. Yes, Neo and Trinity were dead, but the machines rebuilt them, repaired their bodies, and put them in a special anomalium tower, always close but just out of reach. This was the brainchild of The Analyst, a psychotherapist program that masquerades as a genial professional when he is in fact the master of this Matrix version, and it has seen record energy production. But now, Neo's reawakening has jeopardised the entire project. Back in Io, General Niobe is not happy. But before she can court Marshall Bugs, another friendly program would like a word. Remember little Sati, the daughter of Ramakandra and Kamala? She's all grown up now, and she's here to help Neo free his love. And why? Because Ramakandra helped design the Anomalian, and when he learned its use, he gave the plans to Sati, and was promptly deleted for his troubles, by the analyst no less. So yeah, a bit of a grudge going on there. And the mission is on. Outside the Matrix, our heroes cut Trinity's cord. While inside, Neo must convince Tiffany that she is Trinity. Which goes about as well as you expect, when a sadistic psychotherapist controls reality. But shock! Trinity was in there the whole time. Which doesn't sit well with the analyst. But he didn't reckon with Smith. And now, Neo and Trinity will have to face a swarm to escape. Which leads to a rooftop and a leap of faith. But now, Trinity's an anomaly too. And this time, it's she that saves Neo. And so, our movie ends with a little payback for our heroes, who then fly off to new adventures together. So that was The Matrix Resurrections. And come on, this is The Matrix we're talking about. Of course I'm going to put it into the House of Love. So let's get it out of the way first. This isn't a noodle-baking, reality-breaking, true original like the first Matrix, nor is it the massively scaled-up gods-in-the-schoolyard kind of deal like Reloaded and Revolutions, but it does twist this familiar story and make the situation fresh enough to keep me interested. Keanu Reeves returns to the role that defined him, ever more confused, yet still a picture of determination in battle. Carrie Ann Moss has a lot less to do for most of the movie as Tiffany, only stretching her trinity chops in the finale, but she plays it well, for a suburban mom with a bike habit. And while Hugo Weaving is noticeably absent, Jonathan Groff plays a delicious refresh, though as he says, a little too much on the piercing blue eyes. And who ever thought that Neil Patrick Harris could play calculating so very well? His analyst, both the consummate professional and the self-assured supervillain, rounds out this movie to a T. But this is so much more than the headliners. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Jessica Hennick, Priyanka Chopra Jonas, a returning Jada Pinkett Smith, and not forgetting Lambert Wilson's Merovingian, now little more than a bearded hobo, who seems only to turn up just to spit some French curses at the protagonists. And we have to give it up for Chad Stahelski's extended cameo as Chad, Tiffany's husband. And while this story is little more than a twist on Matrix 1, it's also a fantastic update to the concept. So is it a perfect movie? No. A couple of the fight scenes, especially the warehouse tete -a tete between Neo and Smith, seem extraneous. And I did notice how short Reeves's lines were kept, but I'm really grasping at straws to even nitpick here. What's most impressive though, is that this was filmed mostly on location, in real locations, and as much as possible in camera. And it shows. Not so much a desert of the real as a triumph. Lana Wachowski has delivered a fantastic fourth instalment and introduced a new generation at a critical moment. Neo, Trinity, I believe. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out Matrix Month, linked below. But for now, this is your humble operator, Funky Monkey, wishing you life, love, and unlimited creativity. So long!
folks. Greetings, Copper Tops. This is Agent M, reminding you to watch the Matrix Month playlist, like and subscribe to this channel, and join the Discord chat. Whatever you think that you know about Discord is irrelevant. Do not disappoint me. Goodbye, audience. <laughs>